Welcome to the lab. Today we have some apparently huge patch notes that I didn't read yet. So I'm going to react and, well, try to figure out what are those changes and how they affect the gameplay right now. Welcome to Lotus Lab. All right. Patch notes. Patch notes. Seven. <laughs> All right. I'm muting this. Um, editor's note. This is a preview of the agent balance change in shipping with the patch 704 at the start of episode 7, act 2. The complete patch notes with all upcoming updates will go up next week. All right. So they, they essentially want to change a lot of agents because champions was going to end and they wait, waited for the champions, champions, champions to end to get changes in before, like, you know, pro players actually would have to like change the entire game plan. All right. Valorant asks you to make tough decisions when interacting with enemy utility, shooting, dodging, and timing your moment to take a decisive action. We want everyone to come away from rounds feeling like they had the possibility of making a better play if only they were a little faster or smarter. <laughs> Bro. There's like... 1% of the player base that actually critically think about the round. They will rest, says... Unlucky, man. Unlucky. Not my fault. Teammate fault. I have done everything correctly, you know? So, fortunately for you guys in chat, this is actually for you. All right. The team has noticed that when faced with multiple pieces of utility or some of larger scales ultimates, your avenues of counterplay can sometimes be overloaded, leading you to feel unsure of what's happening or what you could do the next time. Uh... This sounds like... I, I'm not reading yet yet... Uh, this sounds like they absolutely wreck utility. Okay, let's see. While well, patch 704 includes changes to over half of a roster. Oh, shit. The changes are sharply focused on increasing game state clarity by making the following adjustments. Reducing the frequency what, of large area of effect ultimates. Oh my god. All right, so that means that Breach is now probably nine orbs or something like that. Well, Duelists are going to be off, Phoenix Bolt, six orbs, let's go. Oh, no, if, if that happens, if that happens, I'm going to flip. All right, reducing the amount of time utilities active in the world. Okay, so before we read further, I know where they're coming from, because at the pro level... And pro level only. And ranked, none of this will matter. But at pro level, when teams are coordinated, in many rounds, you feel that as a defender, your only option is to play retake. And you cannot hold a site. So I'm assuming this is why those changes are being made. Because many of the defense rounds just feel like we have to play retake because... There's too much utility, and it's, it, we cannot just hold the site. Reducing the HP of the shootable utility. I'm assuming turrets and stuff like that, because everything else is 20 HP or 1 HP. We also believe the ultimate cost update below better, better align a large area high impact ults with the pressure they place on the enemy, creating both a better pacing of the round defining abilities and a clearer choice competition between high and low cost ults. I'm, I'm already getting mad. If the duelists are staying untouched, I'm gonna get mad. They are the problem, by the way. Though many of these changes are subtle, we hope all together they improve game state clarity and that the sense that you have even more opportunities for your skill to shine through. Jun Cuervo, agent designer. All right, breach. Oh my god. Hey, I like this. Aftershock. Ticks reduced from 3 to 2. Damage increased from 60 to 80. So I like this because it, um, it's more aligned with the old first Aftershock that we had that was just dealing 150 or 200, can remember exactly, uh, when it just blows up. This one is better because you, are, you will get consistently more damage because you were typically, if you're getting damage of Aftershock, it was just 60 or you kill someone or you deal zero. There was never a, a chance that you get 120 in, unless someone on literally on purpose stands in it, gets 120, and then peeks out. So, uh, I like this change. 80 is a formidable damage. It's like Sova ult, 
right? 80 is very formidable. And what is very important, 80 damage leaves people at 70. <laughs> so, two bullets from a phantom kill them when shot in the nipples, right? So this is a good change because it aligns with the mathematical choice of the damage on the main rifle of the game. So, I like this. This is a good change. Uh, I'm, I'm worried. Oh. Nine orbs. All right. If, if the if the duelist ultimates and overall duelists are not being touched, I am flipping a table. I am flipping a table. I understand where they are coming from, but I don't think. Uh, well, let's see. Okay, I, I will talk about this when I read other changes because right now I, I lack the context. This is a good change. This I need context. Brimstone. I'm not surprised. I think. This guy should have been nerfed a long time ago when it comes to this, but he should get buffed in other areas. So I'm not surprised because Orbital Strike, if you're watching the video that I just released yesterday, I consider Brimstone Ultimate the best ultimate in the game. All right? Uh, and, uh, ah, okay. <laughs> time to re-equip gun takes slightly longer after using the ability. There's absolutely no reason for doing that. No one ever c complained about this, that the Fade is equipping the gun too fast after using a Prowler, and this is just a straight-up nerf for solo queue players. I don't like this change at all. Like, this is, like, for pro players, Fade is typically, like, going second, so it doesn't really change much unless it's a 1v1. For ranked, when there's less co coordination and you need to rely more on yourself, this is a direct nerf and a huge one. We're going to see how big of a change is this, but I'm assuming around 250 to 300 milliseconds change, and that is huge. So, if this is like 50 milliseconds, no one gives a fuck. But if it's more than 200 milliseconds change, then this is actually a big change. So, yeah. We'll see. Gecko. Mosh pit. The impacted area does 10 damage per second before exploding. Oh! So, I considered Mosh pit already the best utility piece in Gecko's arsenal. Now, this is just straight up strong. Like, straight up giga strong. If I remember exactly, um, Gecko explodes after 4 seconds or 5. So, means that, um, Three seconds? Three. Okay, so, so 30 damage. That is actually huge. Because if someone tanks the first three seconds, right, or two seconds, that, that means that he's being brought to the phantom headshot rate, or if he tanks 30, but I don't believe that's going to happen, then he gets in the range of three body shots from a vandal. All right, wingman. HP reduced from 100 to 80. Good change. I think it's a good change, uh, because on pistol rounds that was actually incredibly tough to deal with this. Unlucky. Gecko is uh, not strong anyway, so he gets weaker. All right, trash. Explosion had a little, little makeover to make it easier to see and understand the area it has affected, on top of being beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. All right. Well, the range is five meters, by the way, on the explosion, so... Killjoy. <laughs> At the same time as Fracture rotates out. The only map with four orbs. Alright. Uh, again, for the ultimates, we're gonna talk a little bit... We're gonna talk about the cost of the ultimates going to nine when we have context of the entire patch notes. Alright? Omen. The, if... <laughs> if he doesn't get buffed on the ultimate... Uh, Alright, Paranoia. No movement velocity imparted when casting. What? Why? That is such a cool aspect of Omen. You know what, you know what this means, right? Like, this is the... Um, 
Omen goes backwards and pushes Paranoia. The Paranoia goes slower. Omen goes forward and presses Paranoia. Paranoia goes faster. It was such a such a cool aspect. Um Oh wait, no, 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 no. I, I'm stupid. No, 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 no. Never mind, never mind. Different, different guys. I, I realized my English just absolutely trolled me. This is different. No movement velocity imparted when casting. That means that when you cast paranoia, you are not being slowed down. Right? That's what it means? So, you're not affected, your speed is not affected when you're throwing it. So this is a buff. If I understand it correctly, which is nice. And we should still have the ability to make it slower or faster. So that's nice. Sky. But why no ultimate change? Like... Uh. Sky has become a keystone of the current meta through her blend of recon and space taking utility. Thank god they didn't mention healing because it's useless. While we like that she can potentially unlock new comps through this combo, we think she has lacked... She has lacked clear weaknesses compared to her peers given the wide range of value she brings. She actually has one less skill than the other agents because of the heal, which I think is the weakness of her kit. But it doesn't change the fact that the two basic pieces of her utility kit are giga important. These changes reduce the distance in which Guiding Light can provide in... Oh, 40 meters, I'm assuming. Changes also helps reduce the amount of time enemies need to worry about her flash when she flies it a great distance without activating it. Wait, what? Changes also helps reduce the amount of time enemies need to... Okay, we'll see. We've also reduced the health of Trailblazer and Seekers to make them slightly easier for enemies to deal with. Sky's ultimate cost will increase to better reflect the high level of baseline value it provides. Interesting. We'll be keeping a close eye on these updates to see if they push the choices, the choice competition between Sky and her peers into a healthy place, or if further updates are needed in either direction. Guiding light. Max duration while casting reduced from 2.5 seconds to 2. That is greatly nerfing the flash. Think about it this way. The distance, like the, the distance that you cover in 2.5 seconds is huge on the map. Now think about it. Half a second less of the duration of the flash equals to like around 20 meters. Yeah, probably. Maybe like 15 meters. It is going to be... Um, it, it's going to be like 15 meters less of range, you know? In the French patch notes, here's the omen change. The agent's movement velocity is not transferred to the skill. Oh. So it's not a buff, it's a nerf. Oh, that's unlucky then. Thank you, chat. That is like the cool aspect of omen that I really liked. Because many times when I played omen, I actually used the slow paranoia. Because it's affects your opponents longer because they're like oh no it's going it's coming at me ah! like when someone is trapped on ascent on jenny when it's slow paranoia it actually affects him for a longer time it's 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 unlucky i guess all right let's go back to sky trailblazer hp reduced from 100 to 80 good change again i think wingman is like unlucky for gecko because he's not good for trailblazer this is like definitely needed like, this is something that is definitely needed. Wingman got hit by the ricochet from Sky. Unlucky for Gecko. Uh, Seekers, from 7 to 8, I'm not surprised. And Seekers have increased from 150 to 120, so three bullets of a Vandal, which is okay, yes, I would say. That's fine. It's still three bullets from a Sheriff, so that doesn't change anything. Uh, four bullets from a Ghost instead of a 5. But the, 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 like, I'll be honest with you, both Brimstone and Sky ults should be 8 in the beginning, and not in this, like, overall patch notes. But the Chinese patch notes say it's immediately cast instead of held. For, for paranoia... Interesting, so patch notes from the Chinese patch notes actually give us more information. I don't like the fact that... Um, 
We'll see, we'll see. But I don't like the fact that paranoia is like instant. I don't like this. I liked it being equipped, I'll be honest with you. But we'll see. Okay. Sova. Let's see. What is happening? Recon Bolt. I mean, I understand. I understand. But again... Again... This means... Great change for pro play. Not a good change for ranked. Okay? Like, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. I hope Jet Smoke is now two seconds or three seconds long. Because remember that Recon Bolt was being covered by a Jet Smoke for the entire duration of the, of the Recon Bolt, right? This is now like just... I don't know. And uh, whatever. Like, I just hope the duelists are nerfed to the ground. But don't tell me, chat. Don't spoil me. Don't spo I'm not reading chat right now. Viper. Ah! Oh, no. Thank God I'm not playing Viper anymore. If I would still be a Viper main, I would be weeping. I would be weeping blood from my eyes and anus, man. Like, so many nerves to Viper. It's actually unreal, man. Like... Playing Viper in solo queue is a pain. Like, my anus would be hemorrhaging blood. What was what that word? Hemorrhagin. Hemorrhag... I don't... I'll, hemorrhage, right? Anyway. Astra. We've noticed a large power disparity between Astra's Gravity Well and Nova Pulse. Our goal is to create a clearer use cases for both abilities. Gravity Well will be Astra's tool for controlling space and Nova Pools for quickly affecting an area. Oh. At the same time, we hope to reduce some of the oppressive and long-duration pressure Astra Stars produce by providing enemies a chance to push past the activated gravity well during its wind-up period if they act quickly. Oh. We're updating Cosmic Divide to help clarify the overall game state by eliminating uncertainty around whether you or your enemies are close enough to the world to be heard. I'm assuming that means that there's absolutely zero, n zero noise being heard from the other side of the wall. Doesn't matter how close you are, you will not hear anything. All right. We also think this gives Astra Wall a clearer pro profile for her and her allies to play around. Startup time increased from 600 milliseconds to... Oh my god. That's a full second and 250 milliseconds. To give you a context... To give you context, an average human being, like non-gamer, has a reaction time of 250 milliseconds. A gamer, even an old one like me, I have an average reaction time between 150 to 170 if I slept well, you know? So, think about it this way. How much of time you are getting to react to the gravity well? That is absolutely unreal. Th this is like, you're gonna, you're never gonna get grabbed by this. You shouldn't at least. You know? And the duration of the gravity time is also decreased, and that's a huge nerf as well, because it affects, they, like, let's, let's talk about Hosplant, right? And when the gravity well is sucking you in. At 750 milliseconds is giga important, because that means you get that 750 milliseconds more to defuse the spike. So this is, um, yeah. Nova Pulse startup time decreased. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I wasn't even aware that there's a such huge contrast between Gravity Well and I thought, I felt there's a big difference, but I didn't know it was 650 milliseconds. I'll be honest with you, I think this should be one second, and this should be like 800 milliseconds. But yeah. Body blocking the suck may work better now? Uh, yes, for sure. Body blocking, body blocking the suck might actually be a counter. Like, it might actually work fully, you know? Cosmic Divide. Audio now is blocked completely by the wall rather than muffled. Okay, I like this change. I like this change. This is a very, very good change for the clarity for the game. I like this. So that's what I assumed from this text here. 
Shit! Oh! All right, guys. Before I read the patch notes here, I'm gonna show you uh, my post, and we'll and we'll make a comparison uh, here. So my smoke, uh, sorry, my smoke, my nerf for Jet was. In my opinion, Jet is still a bit too strong. My nerf ideas. Running speed with the ultimate equipped equals to pistol speed instead of knife speed. Gliding only active for 15 seconds after the updraft. Right? So you can only glide for 15 seconds. Then Drew Spark from Sentinels um, suggested reducing the smoke duration from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. I actually think, as I said here, 2 seconds is too drastic. It's not long enough. But 3 seconds would be nice because with 3 seconds you cannot get half of the spike but it still like blocks vision for long enough to you, for you to make a decision on what to do. All right, let's see. Um, all right. Since the last time we released changes to Jet, she has continued to be a mainstay of both competitive and professional play. We like that the dash changes 4.8, that was such a long time ago, oh my god, push her to be more deliberate and tactical. Yeah, because otherwise Cnet was just killing everyone. But still feel that Jet is often given more reliable power windows and generous tuning than other duelists and ages in general. You think, community? What do you think about that, huh? Old Star was light, uh, was... Old Star was right, my friends. Our goal with these changes is further sharpening Jets as the aggressive high-precision dualist by increasing the international inten, inten, intentionality got it, of her ability usage and power windows. We want to maintain her unique ability to break through chokes and dash onto side while reducing her defensive power holding angles and her ability to reactively undo tactical mistakes with her array of quickly cast abilities. Dude, I have tinnitus now. We believe these changes align Jet's overall power level and place in the tactical cycle with other agents while maintaining Jet's unique role and fantasy on the Valorant roster. To help explain our thought process, we've provided context on how each change aims to support these goals and we'll be keeping a close eye on how these changes land at our levels of play. You know, it's funny, none of the other agents are getting any explanations. But you know what? why this one is getting an explanation for every change? Because the kiddos and ranked are gonna be screeching at Riot, My Jet! If, if there are changes happening to Reyna, they have to explain it as well. Because otherwise those 13-year-old children that are actually 23 years old are not going to understand anything. But I also digress because those motherfuckers are not reading patch notes anyway. So, yeah. Alright, Tailwind. So, Dash. Dash window decreased. Oh! What? what? Oh my god! 12 seconds to 7.5? What? What? Oh my god! That is an awesome change. That is an awesome change. I love it. So why do I love this? Because when Jet plays on defense, if I peek an angle and I see Jet, right, and I'm playing something else than a Jet or a Chamber, or to some degree a Reyna, I'm not re-peeking that angle for 12 seconds. Because that Jet just activated the dash and for the 12 seconds, at jet is holding an angle in an off angle and I'm at a, at a disadvantage. This greatly reduces the time that I have to sacrifice to wait till her dash goes away. So this is a fantastic change for the attackers to be more conscious about the jet defensive position. Uh, while for the attack, it doesn't change much because you should be activating the dash when you want to commit to the to the side hit. But the thing is, think about it this way: when you activate the jet jet uh, jet the jet dash now, and there's a brimstone molly, you cannot wait it out because the brimstone molly is now longer than your tailwind duration. So this is actually 
a very, very good change. You know? At 12 seconds, Jet could often find value activating her dash without clear intention or make incorrect calls, but still have time to find another use for a dash. Shortening this window pushes Jet to be more deliberate with her calls and reduces Tailwind's, Tailwind's power at defensively holding... Oh, see? See? While minimally impacting her ability to proactively use the dash to break onto site. Literally what I just explained before reading that. Right? So, yeah. That's my explanation as well with some examples of how they actually apply in-game. So that's nice. Activation wind up increased from 750 to one second. I think this doesn't really matter much because when someone is not act didn't activate the jet dash and and peaks, he's already dead. You know? So this is not that impactful as anyone would think. This, this though, this change, huge. Increasing Tailwind's wind up, wind up should promote proactive use by reducing jet ability to activate it reactively when caught off guard in the middle of a fight and successfully escape. Okay. Cloudburst. <gasps> so it's... <laughs> it's literally in between what um, Drew Spark from Sentinels said and what I said. I said three seconds, he said two seconds. So... Uh, this is actually incredible change because you're not able to defuse half of the spike and then put pressure on your opponent with the second smokes like that is huge and also this is even this is even bigger time to re-equip gun takes slight i mean it's not bigger this let's not kid ourselves two, two and a half seconds this is like an incredibly important change for the entire game this is like nuts this is absolutely nuts how big this change is for clutches, for retakes, for attacking sites. Like, the change is awesome. I love this. Would have loved three seconds, actually, to be more fair. But 2.5 seconds is not as short as two seconds and not as long as three. So I guess it's a middle ground between what Drew Spark and me tried to suggest. So this is very good. Time. Now, we don't know exactly how much of a change this is. We want to reduce some of the persistent safety jet gets dashing into escaping with smokes, sharpening cloudbursts to be fast but powerful too that forces players to be quick and precise with the decision. So, um, I don't know how big of a nerf this is because we don't know how big of a change this is. Once I see the duration change, like is it 200 milliseconds? Is it 50 milliseconds? Is it 300 milliseconds? We're going to see how much this affects. But if this is a full equip time of a vandal, for example, so it's a full one second, that is an incredible change. Think about it this way, right? So, I cloudburst, the smoke lands, it starts the timer, I dash into the smoke, right? So already like 500 milliseconds passed through that smoke, and that's if I do it instantly. I dash into the smoke, it's two seconds left on the clock, I have to re-equip re -equip the gun. If I have to wait one second for the gun to re-equip. That means that the smoke is going to be up for one second more. That means that I have to be crystally sharp, crystally sharp to be able to take a gunfight because I don't have two more seconds to think about what I'm going to do. You know? Insane change. You know? But we'll have to see how big of a change, like how many milliseconds this is. Updraft. <laughs> what? Charges decrease from 2 to 1. Well, there's a buff to her economy because you don't have to spend cash now for the second one. With two updrafts, we've seen moments where jet escape situations where they have been tactically outplayed by throwing enemies off by relying on updraft's unpredictable movement. We hope to reduce some of the unhealthy movement extremes updraft can produce and increase the importance of using it at the right time. You know what's funny? Three hours ago, three hours ago, I literally spoke about... No, not three hours ago. Just literally before the patrons were dropped, I played Jet, right? On, on, on that map. No, that was two maps before. Two maps before, I played Ascent on Jet. And I literally said how her entire kid is just working in unison for escape mechanism. Every single piece of utility can work like a dash. 
apart from the dash. Like the dash is the dash, and then the smokes can be like semi dashes, the app thrust can be semi dashes. Everything helps you to be safe when you make a terrible decision in game and you're not getting punished because you have all of this, right? All right. Bladestorm from seven to eight. All right. <laughs> Ah, uh, they didn't change anything else. Well, unlucky. But hey, I'm happy they nerfed her. Jet's ultimate has proven one of the most flexible, reliable, and economically powerful gun replacement ultimates because of its lack of timer, reset on kills, and harmony with Jet's movement. This change should bring Bladestorm up to the same cost of comparable weapon ults such as the Tour de France and Showstopper. It's literally... Guys, what I proposed as changes to Jet, right? What I proposed as changes to Jet this year was not even close to drastic as those changes that Riot actually did. And I got butchered for my opinion. Oh, I am so... Like, how do you say that? Um, vindicated. Right? Vindicated. That's what I think, feel like right now. Oh, that's end? Wait, what? Oh yeah, right. They um they said the, the, how many agents are changed here? Because they said uh, half of the roster over the half of the roster is being changed, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh wait, that is eleven. What was the text? Um, where was it? Um. Includes changes to over half a roster. The changes are sharply focused. Okay. Um, complete patch notes will, we, will, with all upcoming updates will go up next week. Okay. So I'm assuming some other changes will be um, done as well. Like, um, all right, let's talk a little bit about the uh, ultimates going from eight to nine. So <sighs> it's a direct nerf for ranked, 100%. Like, it's going to be harder to play yourself as an initiator because you will feel so underpowered. Because, like, the changes were already like that when the ultimates went from 7 to 8. Bridge ult was 7. Brimstone ult was 6. You know, like, uh, Fade ult was 7 as well. All of those ultimates were 7. So it was Killjoy. And when they nerfed it, nerfed it to 8, I felt it was needed but it felt bad for the ranked players. With 9, that feels incredibly, incredibly terrible for ranked, but is a necessary change for pro play. And the only way of somehow balancing this for ranked would be giga nerfing every single duelist. You know? Also kind of weird that the turret didn't get HP nerf, no? It's 150. I wonder why is it not 120, but I feel like all of the changes here are good. I like all of those changes for pro play. I'm just worried about ranked. You know, that's, that's, my, that's my pessimistic outlook on those changes. But for pro play, this is going to be amazing. And I would love to see in the full patch notes that we were also gonna get nerfs on raise, right? Just because we get such a huge nerf on jet and huge nerfs on initiators. I would like to see a nerf on Killjoy or a piece of utility. I would like to see a nerf on um, Phoenix ult going to seven. I would like to see a uh, nerf on... Um, well, you could nerf your robot. You could just re-roll, re like, un un unbuff the flash. Because the flash got a buff of 250 milliseconds duration at one point. So we'll just cut that off, you know, and go back for that. But otherwise, he's okay, you know? Like, I, I actually think that Yoru was balanced before that one small buff before the, the, the flash. So that could have been reversed. Um, Neon, I think, should be nerfed for sure. 
Uh, in what way? I don't really have a suggestion. Um, deadlock should be buffed, right? Um, and then, um, what other duelists do we have that we didn't speak of? Reyna should get just a straight up rework or get deleted. I don't really care about her. And uh, 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 that's about it, no? That's about it. All right. Thank you for watching, guys. We're going to end the video and we're going to do another video when the full patch notes will be released and we're going to talk more about the changes and we'll see how they are being put in context of the full patch notes. But it's actually awesome that Riot shared this. All right.